Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it's so fun to see all of your faces. Um, I'm Joel Tarman, the director at Sunset Youth Services. I'm D director of digital arts and technology. Uh, what that really means is that I get to make uh, music and videos and creative projects with youth in San Francisco. So um, just a little background, uh, Sunset Youth Services has been around for 30 years with uh, the goal of connecting with youth who are, um, you know, making moves in their life. Uh, some Sometimes that's making moves to stabilize after coming out of incarceration or other things. Sometimes it's just uh, meeting creative youth who uh, want, want some support and want to learn how to record and how to mix and how to do creative stuff. Um, and so pretty much using digital art and music as a way to connect with, uh, with youth and empower youth in San Francisco. And so uh, I have been on staff since 2007, uh, so a little while now, and we've gone from having one recording studio in our building to four, and then we recently just branched out um, by building a recording studio in a sprinter van that we can take around to group homes and schools around the city. So we're just getting our feet wet um, there, and some of the pieces that uh, we've worked on with Kronos has been done and recorded out of that van, so we're really excited. Uh, we also have a recording studio up at Juvenile Hall where we connect with youth uh, who are locked up um, and try to help them make transitions back out to the community. Uh, so it's a little bit about Sunset Youth Services. Uh, the deepest thing that we're kind of about is relationships. And so uh, as you can imagine this year during, uh, during this pandemic, it's been pretty wild, uh, wild to learn how to do that together and build that sort of trust um, and keep our creative work going. So uh, it's been an honor to be traveling with this group of people in the Kronos uh, Remix project. So I'm gonna kick it over to David who really, uh, you know, is is the heart of uh, what made this project happen. I've lived in this neighborhood since 1989 in the sunset and I walked by the Sunset Youth Services for many, many years and always wondered what was going on inside. And then at a certain point, um, Janet, our, our manager, Janet Calperthwaite, um, uh, well, she, she has known a member of the board there and was introduced uh, more formally. And we began to find out what you guys have been doing and are doing. And it, it, it just seemed like we're really trying to do the same thing, actually, and we're kind of in the neighborhood and let's work together. And what, what I've been so inspired by is the vibe that comes from you, Joel, initially. And then it's, it's just um, everybody that works with you uh, is inspired by your commitment. And, and um, yeah. Everything that we've done together so far has just felt right to me. You know, in a world that's so distraught and so uh, off kilter, that's not the way it is at Sunset Youth Services. And, and when we work together and, you know, in the last several days, I've seen um, uh, what Toddy Toddy has done and it's it's just remarkable. And so you introduced me to him. You inter you've introduced me to everybody here on this panel, okay? And um, Kayla and Lexi, I mean, the the music and the poetry is so beautiful, and it's so much a part of our city here. And it, uh, I could not be happier than I am right now about the, the direction that our work together is, is going. These remixes are taking place in the context of the 50 uh, for the Future 
project that's uh, that you're leading. And so I guess kind of ha- what was your vision behind that? And I guess the vision uh, to take this music that you've been creating and working with these composers and then just hand it out and, and kind of give, give it to youth to chop up and spin and create their own creations out of. 50 for the Future is, is a long-term project. Um, we're making 50 new pieces with composers from many corners of the musical world. And then this music is, uh, we're able to give it to other performers, other producers, other other people interested in making new things, either string quartet, other string quartets, or other people that might be interested in taking it to another place. And that's what I think is happening on the, the remix. So it's, it's really fun for us to hear what you guys are making with it. I feel like classical music often feels like kind of a guarded, like a, like a garden with a fence around it, um, you know? And so it's like the, this is kind of the opposite is like, nah, <laughs> let's take the fences down yeah. and, and let the people in. Uh, and that's one thing I love about this project. Figo, you were, you helped um, kind of cast a vision for, we've been meeting on a lot of Thursdays for, uh, for the past four months, um, you know, what's, uh, you know, for somebody who wasn't a part of any of those meetings, what would you describe those like and kind of what was your hope behind behind those? Every Thursday just kind of looked like this. We were just, you know, we'll sit around and have a conversation, do a check-in. Um, you know, one of my favorites is a rose and a thorn. A rose is something positive happening and a thorn is a challenge. It's like a go-to. It's a cool little temperature check. And um, so that was something that, you know, it was nice to just know how people are doing beyond even the music. It was just nice to see how your day went. And as we started exploring the music, we started getting a taste of what we all liked. So I remember one of the sessions, we brought some of the music that influenced us and pieces that, you know, helped us get inspired. And um, yeah, I I, I think it's just been a really cool experience uh, to be part of uh, this project because, I mean, hearing some of this music, it's like, as you mentioned, Joel, these fences have been built. And a lot of times kids from, you know, my side of the neighborhood have not been introduced to classical music, you know, the kids from the Bay Area. So it's so cool. Uh, David, thank you for the opportunity to have these dope musicians and poets and singers be able to cook up these remixes. Um, Yeah, I could go on for days. Lexi, because you actually kind of, you do have a little bit of your foot in the classical world yourself, uh, but you're also this producer of hip hop and you kind of like, you traverse many, many kind of roles and worlds. You're a singer, but you're also a recording engineer and producer. You've done some mixing on this project. So I guess I'm uh, maybe, could you tell folks a little bit about your musical journey and you know, also how you got connected with Sunset Youth Services and this project? Honestly, I kind of like self-taught myself a lot of like my singing habits and stuff. But as for like instruments, um, I learned violin and then I got into cello and like I know the keys, um, and, you know, music theory and stuff because that's what I'm taught. But um, getting involved with this project, I think you reached out to me. Somebody reached out to me. Um, asking about like the remixes and I was like of course I'm down so this has been really dope and again thank you for allowing us to like sample your stuff and like make beautiful art out of it like this is a great way to express yourself but yeah I'm really excited to share it kind of nervous be patient
Myself, but definitely unmixed. Definitely, you know. <laughs> I mean, you. Uh, I said work in progress on the mix. I have there's not a mix on there, but it sounds it it like speaks. Uh, I don't know. So let's before we before we just give the artist chance to like uh, beat themselves up, which we're so good as artists to do. Any feedback for Lexi on that one from from the beat was like. I mean, we got we got to work on a few things, but like I like the the vocals. Like I really like the vocals on your part. You feel me? Like, like that was that was tough. Uh, I'm proud of you. Keep going. I, I mean, that's all I can give is like kind of. I only heard it once. I want to hear it multiple times. But I I thought uh, the mix of of uh, the Chronos part of it was just really great. I. I actively love it <laughs> mally who um is an artist at sunset youth services and upstar records a uh, great producer recording engineer mixer now and just kind of launching himself into the beat making space uh so mally has been part of some remixes doing remixes with chronos <laughs> quartet for the last uh ooh, three years i think that you you were part of the first remix, so uh, welcome, Mally. How y'all doing, man? Uh, yeah, I was definitely. I remember that. That was a lot. I mean, like I loved it at the same time, but uh, it was definitely a lot to like do because I was I'm new at I was new at producing, so like to be able to like learn all that stuff with you guys, that was a lot. But <laughs> it was also very fun. How did you get involved in the Kronos project and kind of? You know, I, what's been your approach to to listening to the samples and and kind of building your own sound off of them? Uh, I remember, I think back when I first started kind of coming here, I think is when we originally had met Kronos. So I was uh, kind of always on board to just be like, like it was different stuff. And I was, I'm very open-minded in the sense when it comes to music. So I was definitely like on board the jump and when you had invited me on and i was able to create like i i think when i really like kind of did it i actually did it i made a beat for toddy uh when toddy was there that night and then Figo was there and like he kind of toddy was the one that was that was just kind of like told me what the instruments to put in and we kind of just kind of made it and that's when i knew i could like actually like produce something even though it wasn't to like my expectation of what a producer can do um but I can kind of like songs, the song structure I know how to do. So I was able to create that. And then Figo came up with like a crazy hook. And then that's when I was like all on board. I was like, that's it's dope. You know, being able to create something from, a, from scratch and then have a song be like that with a stretch, with a message like that, be that like powerful. You know, I was like, I was like, that's, that's some, and that was, I sampled something from Corn. I know, I think I just sampled a few things from Kronos on that beat. And so, yeah, I was just, after that, I was just like, sign me up, you know, <laughs> like it was, you know, that was pretty much it <laughs> from there. Yeah. I, I mean, it's funny from, from the sidelines, it also feels like the moment, like I kind of saw that happen in you too. Like you were like, you kind of went from like, oh, I'm a rapper to like, oh, I'm a producer. Um, is that, does that feel kind of accurate? No, actually, I like, I, I had like the most like hard like the hardest time, especially with like rapping, and like I still like give myself the hardest time to the, to the, to this day. Oh, um, but I feel like, but okay. but I but I feel like before anything, I'm a digital audio engineer. But Interesting. It's a plus, uh, yeah. Like you know, it's a plus to be able to do that stuff, and then on top of that. Because I'm just audio engineer, I knew I know song structure, which then had me do music production. 
you know it's like that all plays a factor into that so okay. yeah um yeah i all started from sys so thank you bro thank you david for that um yeah man i never knew i could do any of this stuff before i came to sys i put that on everything um so yeah i want to take us real quick to uh to henry uh who is just an awesome producer and um henry tell take us take us through your connection to sunset youth services in this project and maybe tell us a little bit you know what it's like being being a part of the chronos remix project during this uh this year so actually last year i went to i came to sensei youth services i was introduced by one of your fellow youth service uh members uh you might have heard of him cabin maloney he introduced me to sensei youth services and there i that was the first time when i met uh rymo and joel and the other people and every week i went to their um weekly challenges or something like monday they do these uh, they pick a beat and then they would rap on it so that was fun and then i think last year i actually heard about the cronus remix project but i never got a chance to be part of it because i had to move to fresno so kind of put that one aside but this year i had a chance to do the uh, cronus remix project which was awesome um, I had a lot of fun listening to the Chrono samples. Some of them were a little bit um, challenging to to uh, make a remix of. So um, yeah, and I really like those one shots that the that the Chronos uh, project, uh, the Chronos group put put into their uh, packs. So well, so yeah, I kind of wanted to. There's been two different approaches. One approach, which we just heard with Lexi, was to kind of like find these kind of longer longer more like extended pieces um and kind of weave them together but your remixes have been based based on basically taking kind of single hits from from these uh songs um single like just like really usually pretty short snippets of sound from the chrono samples and then building uh, songs around those, which is a really cool and different approach, um, almost using these little tiny samples as your own instrument. So there was one you played uh, this year that was like a dubstep, uh, a dubstep remix that I thought might be fun uh, because it just kind of highlights how you can, like you saw something in the sound that I certainly never saw thought of and david i'm not sure if you ever envisioned it i didn't uh so it's been one of the kind of surprising things in this project has been to kind of like really see what people come back with and i think this one was really surprising to us all so um are you down to share that with us yeah kick it over to uh kayla who um i mean one thing when i think of you kayla i think of the like the word that comes is like i don't know i'm not exactly sure how to say it but like the word is like voice um like you have a voice uh and it's like a voice that kind of commands attention um not just because of your actual physical voice, but because of what you choose to say, right? And how you choose to show up. And I think uh, some our words, our words, yes. Yeah. Our words is very strong. Yeah. Words and intention, too. 
so I'm just want you want to tell us a little bit about you kind of came in on a slightly different path uh, that that than some other folks in in terms of like you weren't working on the the remixing the music itself, but on hearing those remixes and kind of like like seeing seeing the potential with your poetry. So you want to walk us through your creative project and kind of what it's uh, process, sorry, and uh, what it's been like to be part. Sure. Um, well, first thing, yes, thank you to David and the whole like Kronos team and like all of you for making the beats even. Um, I hope to even use some in the future, but like I've never done a project like this and I've always wanted to, so very much big thank you. Um, but how I go about like creating, so I, I don't, I don't sing, I don't rap, I don't do music, not like that, like I love music and I'll dance, but like I can't figure out how to be on beat or whatever. So this was really exciting for me because I wanted to like see if I could and venture into it and you know like try my hardest and so when I was shown I was shown the beat I used in another beat and I learned that it was actually kind of hard because it's very chaotic especially from like a writing perspective um I use songs all the time to write but it's a little easier when I kind of can find my own rhythm to use my words mm -hmm. um so that was like a challenge that I had to overcome, which was kind of fun because I would use it to get started. And then I would kind of be like, okay, I got my flow. I'm going to play my own music, stuff that sounds similar, even like has the same kind of vibe to it and like try to go from there. Um, but yeah, it was really fun to like, I'm not like a San Francisco native native and I've lived here for a long time and I'm always thankful to the city for like welcoming me and stuff. But being able to write about a city that my my mom and my dad grew up in and like in the poem it's a love story and I'm not saying it's about my dad because he sucks but it's about my mom and her presence and her presence with love and with men and with the city and how that affects me in my current life whatever that looks like um so yeah it was really fun and thank you again for letting me do it <laughs> found them, pink with roses and tattered stickers, hidden in a tiny box filtered with flowers and dust. This box sat amongst my baby things, only collecting time. It was her diary, a book filled with thoughts, dreams, letters, even love poems from a man unknown. I never asked her about these, never asked about the words she had written, Never told her I found them, or that someone had read what happened to the love they shared. And now, because I know too much, I stare at her, my mother. She always so beautiful, who knew the San Francisco streets that she hoped would save me, hurt her so, had hurt her so badly. I think, I think about those wrinkled pages, and I think about them often actually. Especially when chaos consumes, on nights like these. Moon full and belly fuller with all we could consume. Swallowing like savages, we on cloud nine with brown acid and red eye. I wonder where I am. I wonder if those diaries would tell me secrets or truths. I wonder if they knew which twin was at its peak. Or if they are sisters of equal heights. Your jacket barely provided warmth, much like your words and actions. Our skate up made my bones cold, much like your touch. Her diary claimed that love took care, and his letters always confirmed he cared. If so, then why was your jacket so cold, your words so blistering, your touch ever so distant? Only warmth was in your bed, and even then your window, overlooking bay views, always brought in Frisco fog, 
I guess that's what I missed in her point behind her pink rule book. Next move, a voice. Toddy, um, also kind of like Kayla, you're coming in, you came into this project with dance uh, as like your expression and your interpretation. Um, so I'm, I'm interested, you kind of got the lay of the land and picked a couple songs uh, to work on. Tell us about it from that perspective. Um, from my perspective, well, I guess as a dancer, I always listen to music differently than everyone who is not a dancer. And, and um, it just moves me literally and physically and mentally and emotionally and all that type of stuff, spiritually. And um, it helps me get out a message, you know, rather it's a message from the music or from myself or both you know and and that's what it is so like during this project i just finished it at the point last week i want to say i think yeah and um it was really 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 really, really, really like touching so the, the the last little joint that we did is a dope song and um And uh, it, it had a lot of, I had to put a lot more feeling into it than the other two songs that Kronos had that I did, that I moved to. And uh, I guess like sometimes like when you, as an artist, like sometimes when you do things, it's, it's no worse to explain it, you know, it's like, it's, it's really, I guess more of a grateful feeling, you know, I was so just honored to like do what I love, like for for you guys, you know what I'm saying? Just to show you guys, I love to share what I have with the world, with anybody, with anybody who's willing to to take it in, to see it and to appreciate it the way you guys do that, I know you guys do. It's, I mean, what one of the things, like when we say music moves us, right? Like it's a, uh, like with you, that's like, re like legitimately, it's <laughs> like, like you express your, like your musicality through movement, which um, it's such a cool, um, sometimes in, I feel like in studios and in studio recording, we can kind of miss the movement, you know, that uh, oh, is yeah. like at the base of, uh, of like the roots of all music. Um, so I really feel like, your involvement in the project kind of like bring some of that back back to us <laughs> David and, and and we'll kind of have this this question go around um, I guess what has it been like um, this this collaboration with youth at Sunset Youth Services and like what have you learned um, as part of this collaboration and how do you think you'll take some of that into your, the, your future projects well, what I've learned is um, there is 
there are so many possibilities and flexible, young, adventurous minds should be leading the rest of us <laughs> because uh, I, I have got, just received so many wonderful sources of energy and, and possibilities from all of you. And uh, I, I think that the, the future is limitless. And, and I would like all of us to just step back for a minute and just appreciate um, what we might be able to do tomorrow and the tomorrows following that. And, and it's, it's so cool to be a part of this community right now. That's really what I want to say. And thank you, all of you. <clears throat> Love it. Um, well, why don't we go around with that same question? I'd almost love to hear, uh, Lexi, could you reflect for us a little bit about like maybe what you learned through this process and what, what you might take going, going forward. And we'll just, we'll just bounce. You can bounce it to the next person. Um, well, Chronos, like this whole project has been like the first project I've actually like not dedicated myself to, but like, I don't know, with my music at least, I've been like very active with. And it's taught me a lot about like being patient with myself and like not everything comes out how I want it to or the things that I picture in my head might not come out on the page how I want it to, but to be patient with myself and, you know, go take it day by day. So thank you guys again. Thank you. You want to popcorn it to somebody? Kayla. <laughs> Got it, cheater. That is kidding. Um, <laughs> um oh, that's funny um with chronos i think i want to take away like working with more musical projects or just involving maybe sounds to my poetry because not all of it has to be music but i do think that there are some like visual concepts that would go really well with the audible sounds so i'd like to venture into that can i say I hope that you have the opportunity to be a part of the entire festival because we have explored that in a variety of ways that you might find interesting and even inspiring for your future work. So check it out. <laughs> okay, I'd love to. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to popcorn it to Henry. So this whole process of this Kronos remix project has been a challenge for me, especially before like actually putting like the drums or doing the melody and stuff. I actually, um, I have been actually have been like imagining or brainstorming in my head what I want the beat or what I envision the beat to be. So that's been kind of something that I've been doing for a long time. And it seriously, I mean, like, um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't work out. So, um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this project has been just testing my creativity. Uh, last thing, I mean, what I'll tell you is, I think was a big thing was like patience on this project is, uh, it took, I mean, as you see, it took a while to get everything. Don't I die and I'm, we try our best to stay uh, with the weekly meetings and stuff like that and trying to organize. I think being organized was like at the level that um, I had to focus on and like I really had to be organized with and like practice um, with being so like I'm I'm very busy so like fitting stuff into like my calendar and making sure I do stuff weekly for this was like a big like priority and like yeah that was like it was tough so I think that's something I learned too is just trying to fit things into my schedule you know um so yeah this, it, it it most definitely challenged me but in like a way I guess I don't look at challenges like everyone else does like I'm I'm one of those people who's like yeah bring it like please like give it to me because like I know I'm gonna survive. You know, just this, this, I'm gonna learn and get stronger and get better. You know, and as I'm doing that, I'm also creating and 
and getting deeper into my passion, into myself, into getting closer to other things, which connects me to more things, which connects me to the universe, which just, you know, it's a whole round thing. So it's, it's just, I'm just super grateful. Like I said before, it's just that it's something you can't explain, you know, the other bad and the good just connects with all for me, no matter if I'm having a bad day and I, and I like still made it to the video, you know, I was like, and then lifted me or even after, you know, just, 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 it's a life, it's a life thing, you know, it has everything to do with everything, everything has to do with everything, like, it can affect you, and it has affected me in a good way, so I'm most definitely grateful. Can, can I just say that, uh, Toddy, when I first saw your work, it was Joel that introduced me to your work, and it was a video of you dancing on on the beach, and I th I think it was uh, um, uh, the beach just down the street from Sunset Youth Services. I think. Oh yeah, 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 it was. <laughs> the, talk about feeling more connected to the universe. You connected me. That was great. I just love. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's just. Uh awesome amazing opportunity to be able to work in with from the sounds to the artists that have just all spoke here i mean i just from kayla Alexi to toddy to mally to henry uh to joel for crying out loud um everyone here is uh someone like i'm just a fan of, of folks work here and it's been so cool i will also jump in with mine i mean i think my favorite thing in the world um or two of my favorite things, uh, well, music, but in community, um, those two things together. And so much of that uh, got pulled away. So much of the community aspect of like the just being with and for each other um, got kind of pulled out from under us this year. And so it's been really uh, life giving to build some of that back uh with you all on these thursday nights and as we work on these projects and even as we've just like had to talk about them and pursue them um like one of my one of my favorite things has been like lexi like you pursuing studio time um you know which is like just even you just being like hey i want this thing let me just text joel like i'm like yes like that's we just need that like we need to kind of get back in the rhythm of being there for each other. Um, and this has been a step in that direction in many of my relationships with you all. And um, so the music has been incredible, the chance to work with David, the chance to like get, jump in to this creative work. Um, and right alongside that, it's been the chance to like continue to, to build trust and build like a common work and common like practice together and just to even get to see your faces regularly has been like worth it all. So um, mad love uh, to to everybody here. And uh, I really thank you for for your part in uh, in this. So snaps to you.